Hi, uh, Mark Farina here. Um, and this portion of the demo is a, uh, a, a painting that I did uh, three years ago as a demo for the Art Association, Carmel Art Association. It's been hanging on the wall, and uh, every time I look at it, I, uh, I want to alter the foreground. So um, I'll show you the painting here. Um, this is the painting, and uh, I feel like the um, foreground is too light. It's competing with the uh, sky. And um, I just feel that the uh, focus should be on pretty much on the sky. Um, um, so I think if I darken up the foreground, it uh, will focus more attention on the um, on the sky, the sunset, and uh, I think it'll be have a little more impact rather than uh, having your eye dark around up and down the painting. Um, it'll, it'll stay. Keep your eye up in the most interesting part of the painting. So um, I'm going to do this, try it with a glaze. And uh, the glaze is merely a um, thin lower layer of paint mixed with a, a medium. Um, this is the product I use. Let me get this camera. This is the product I'm using. It's uh, called Me Neo Megalith by Gamblin. And that it, uh, it's a petroleum based medium. Um, it, it uh, dries fairly quickly. I think it's an old uh, modern version of marjoram that the old masters used to use. Um, it's slightly toxic, not as bad as liquid, um, but you can you can get the uh, uh, solvent free uh, gla glazing mediums, uh, linseed oil. Um, you can use linseed oil um, that dries a little slower. Um, Galkid, um, it's a little, they make it in three drying uh, speeds, slow, medium, and fast. Uh, um, I don't use the Galkid, it's, um, I, I like this Neo Megalith, uh, it's, it seems to be a little more versatile. I can use it as a painting um, painting medium while I'm painting uh, with a regular consistency of, of pigment. But uh, the glaze is uh, just a thin, fairly transparent. You can make it as transparent as you want or a little more opaque. Uh, uh, and it'll give you a little more coverage. Um, you can use a glaze to um, warm up the sky if you just uh, need to warm it up a little bit or cool it down, cool down uh, some mountains, background mountains. You can just add a little 
cool off blue and white and a lot of medium and it'll just cool off. It'll act as a uh, a veil of, of cool atmosphere uh, on the painting. But this one, uh, we're going to go dark. So um, let me put the uh, spotlight on my palette. And uh, this is probably a little hard to see um, because of the glare, but I'm going to mix up a medium uh, with um, alizarin and phthalo blue. And th those are both very cool colors. Uh, and then I'm going to add a little raw umber to the mixture. I tried a little glaze over, just a test glaze over the uh, the bottom portion here, and it was a little too violet. So let's see what this looks like. Bear with me, it's all an experiment. <laughs> it's always an experiment. And then I'll add medium to it. Um, kind of get the consistency of maybe honey. Pretty soupy consistency. It's probably better to start off a little darker than you think you need uh, or lighter. And it's easy to wipe off if you, if you want to adjust the medium or the tone. You can, you can just take a paper towel and, and just wipe it off. Uh, I've removed the varnish on this painting. Uh, I had varnished it. It just takes a little solvent, and um, I brushed it out and wiped it off. That, that should take care of the uh, the varnish. So, make sure I'm recording. So this is uh, kind of the consistency I'm working with. Uh, just uh, for your information, I, I usually paint um, with a split primary palette, you know, especially outdoors. Um, I use uh, had lemon, had a uh, light pure, that's a Utrecht color, yellow ochre, uh, had red, medium, alizarin, uh, ultramarine blue. Well, I have an extra color on here. Uh, and cobalt blue, ultramarine blue, cobalt blue and viridian when I'm painting around the ocean. And then I might add one earth color. Now in the studio, I, I can afford to uh, access more colors. Uh, and I add colors as I need them. Uh, I have a couple of extra colors in here. Uh, I have Naples yellow, and uh, this is the raw umber. But normally outdoors, I just carry the, uh, the primaries and uh, a couple of secondaries. 
So um, are we? <laughs> that doesn't sound like a Ferrari. Um, so here we go. We'll, uh, add a little that in here. I'll probably darken up. Part of the ocean too. Um, I may just do that with regular pigment, though. Get a little um, solvent in here and loosen it up. Gonna speed it up a little with a little bigger brush. Just a, a throwaway um, brush, a hardware store. Uh, I know it looks a little streaky, but um, I can smooth that out. And it may take uh, more than one blaze to uh, get the, the value I, I'm after. I want it to be pretty dark, you know. I guess I could repaint the whole thing with, uh, but then I wouldn't be able to give you this demo. <laughs> um, with the ocean, I, I'll probably uh, won't use as much medium, just uh, Kind of give it a regular uh, now this this is the the color I am after it's um, kind of a cool. Maroon, phthalo blue, alizarin, and raw umber. Without the raw umber, it's, it's too uh, violet. The hue is a little too strong. Don't worry about the brushwork. Um, I 
will be smooth now. I think. <laughs> Well, there's uh, a little too much thalo blue. But we'll leave it in there because uh, I'm going to spread it around. Go back to us. Incidentally, to eliminate the uh, exposure to solvents, to clean while well, I'm painting, I clean my brushes with uh, sapphire oil. You don't want to use sapphire oil for a medium. Uh, it's very slow drying. Well, you can if you want it to take uh, a couple of weeks to dry. I wouldn't recommend it. Linseed oil if you don't want to use uh, neomegla or can't get it or don't have it. Sunflower uh, linseed oil works fine. And I think I'm going to just do this up here. This is uh, Cypress Point in Pebble Beach. Played the golf course a few times. This is just putting everything in shadow. Um, Deeper shadow. So that puts uh, much more focus on, on the uh, sunset. It's easy to try to paint, paint it all <laughs> um, and you kind of forget would have attracted you to, to the scene. And, uh, we end up with 
more than one uh, one painting. You're going to end up with two paintings. We'll step back and look at that. Uh, and that seems to be uh, working pretty good. No, so I may have to, like I said, do, do uh, another pass over this, but uh, we'll take a paper towel and uh, just kind of smooth everything out. I'm just barely touching it. Um, I don't want to lift off the, the glaze. Uh, I just want to push the uh, glaze around and let it uh, get this, this, those streaky brush strokes out of there. Barely touching it. I guess you could use a soft brush to If this doesn't work, I, I'll just repaint the, the foreground with the, just cover, cover it up and repaint it. But, um, I, I think it will work. I'm persistent. Oh. This is uh, the raw umber mixed in with the glaze. Looks pretty purple on the screen, um, but it's not that purple. Um, if it starts dripping um, too bad, you can lay it flat or just wipe it, wipe it off a, a little bit.
So I'm going to darken up the ocean now and a uh, couple areas and um, Now there is a nice glare from the sun right about here on the ocean. I have a, a reference photo that's uh, taken not from the same location, but it's uh, similar. And I'm just using it to um, get my especially the water, just to get a, a good feeling for the water. Um, so we'll mix up um, um, glycerin. The internet's uh, kind of fidgety today. I guess all the car people in town. 85,000 people they protected. <laughs> you can hear all of them revving up their engines. So this is a mixture of um, iridium and uh, alizarin. Now these are uh, cool complements. Red and green are complements. So, um, but they're both on the cool side of the of the. Uh, you the cat red would be the warmer red and the green or the alizarin is the cooler cooler red so let's see i'm going to add a little of this thalo blue to that Experience. I've got to be careful with the thalo blue. It's, um, it's transparent, but it has a real strong tinting power. I, I bought it specifically for a uh, mission of China Cove. And that's why it's on my collar. I'm going to move the uh, make this off. this okay now this is a lot this has a lot more pigment in it than the uh, the 
foreground blaze. Um, but it's still pretty thin. Uh, And the darkening of the uh, point out Popping up this uh, edge of the horizon. Get uh, some soft. Uh, so If the sky was still wet, I I just blend it with a brush. But uh, these are a Q-tip. The sky is dry and the make it soft enough line there. I may have to repaint that bottom part of the sky, and then. Uh, it down. Now I'm adding more medium. This is almost a glaze. That white water needs to be cooled off. I don't know about that color. It's kind of Add a little burden to it. It's kind of dead color. Now, when I darken up the ocean, I feel like I need to darken up the point to uh, get the contrast. It is a little more viridian. Let me get closer and closer in. Thank you. 
question. Let's see. Okay. Now this white water needs to be uh, cooled off. Then uh, I may I have to wait until the glaze is dry and then go back over it with another glaze. So I'll try it. This uh, demo was done from two different reference photos. Um, so that probably in reality is a little different than what I depicted in the images. But, you know, kind of. and get creative in the studio. Painting outdoors, I just paint a lot of what I, I see. I, I'm just uh, recording what's out there. If it's it's it has potential, I'll uh, bring it back in the studio and make adjustments. The uh, idea is to get a good painting <laughs> in the first shot, but that, that's elusive. Um, I just don't have the skill to do that. I know painters that do. You can just get out there and knock out a great painting outdoors. I do once in a while. Once on twenty times, but I usually tweak them in the studio. You know, let's uh, try a little thin glaze or overall. Cobalt blue over these. Uh, and it's too thin.
brought most of the shadow to appear in the, sh in, the in the shadow of the foreground. And, um, all pretty much cool, cooler colors. Um, Or cool everything down. The sun is gives a lot of warmth to the lit parts, but the um, the shadow parts are going to be cool. Warm light, cool shadows. That's uh, something that will solve a lot of your um, color problems. I can't quite get that uh, right consistency. I'm, I'm going to just skip uh, skip this part. And let's uh, wipe that off. No, I'll put another glaze over that. And, uh, It's good when it, it's wiped off, and I, I don't want to wipe off uh, the other areas I've done. So this. Pull that color over. Anyway, let's go uh, do the, the sun. Lit area. And Put some paint on here and see what it looks like. See what it does. This is Naples yellow. Um, it's a little cooler yellow than what I have up in the for the sun because it's hitting a cool surface and uh, it's reflected. It's a reflection, but it's still uh, coming off of a, a cool, fairly cool surface of the water. to make this transition here. Now there is a nice breaking wave uh, in my reference photo, which is right down here.
I don't think we have time to mess around with that. my studio at the barnyard and um, they're having a, a big uh, Ferrari event here today. So we hear it sounds like a racetrack. So that's, that's a lot. That blazer. Oh, that's Revving up their cars. Uh, this is probably a little a little rough. Um, but I can uh, Assess it and look at it later and make uh, make further adjustments. Anyway, that's the idea there. Um, maybe a little more light over here. On this side. Strongest reflection right under that sun there. And then um, did want to darken up back to the Little tree back there, I think I'm just gonna get rid of it.
Make this a little more violet. There, the reflection back here. The sky is uh, pretty violet. And you know, just the optimist edge of this horizon. No matter how sharp that horizon looks, um, you really need to keep it soft. You know, the soft edge back there. The, the earth uh, curvature turns away from you and um, it just doesn't end abru abruptly. So um, it has to have a soft edge to uh, recede. Otherwise it looks like the earth's flat. Sorry to inform everybody, but it's not it's round. All right, um, and then I'm going to go back and uh, darken up. This is a point out here. Because that should be darker than the ocean. That strong light behind it, this bank, that, that there should be a lot of contrast to Different brush here. And a little, little blue to it. I don't know, that may be too dark. Just a teeny bit of white. Cool color.
it's too much white. Uh, your values are extremely important in a painting. Um, and the, the more you can uh, fine tune the values, um, the better. Um, I think. When I go out and paint, um, I'm always looking at the values, the darks and the lights, and the and the subtleties. And those are the things that really uh, make or break paintings. More accurate your values are you could paint in black and white and um, still get a good paint the values are really uh, predominant they they establish your design and uh, Composition, they strengthen your composition. Mm -hmm. and, um, so pay attention to your values and it's it's good to uh, keep them simplified. Um, like if you have a, a dark value like this one I'm painting, you don't want to break it up with too many shifts in value. You just want to keep it fairly simple, especially at this distance. And uh, yeah. if you squint at the uh, subject, you're, you're Simplifying the amount of values, eliminating them, uh, reducing the amount of values you see with value shifts. And uh, your darks should stay dark and your lights should stay light. <laughs> and the more you break those up, uh, the less impact your painting will have. Keep it simple. So, um, I think uh, we'll quit there and uh, I may do another pass with this glaze and, and I'll photograph it and uh, put it up on the screen. And Monday. So there, I I like it better than it was. Okay. <laughs>